in order to protect access to corporate application and most importantly the data that resides in their most mature companies have implemented identity management system of any kind of brand to do the provisioning, the provisioning, recertification, all that good stuff. They have centralized on a directory. No longer they have individual directories for authentication. They have centralized on Active Directory. And I put a, I put a Swiss cheese in there because uh, dealing with Active Directory and its holds uh, requires some some techniques and precisely because you cannot rely just on AD alone. Many companies have implemented multi-factor authentication, privilege access management, and CTNA, you know, zero trust uh, environments uh, like Cloudflare, so Scalar, for protecting, again, stuff that is uh, both on-prem as, as well as on cloud. Now, on top of that, organizations have put sophisticated EDRs that can look inside every machine and know what's actually happening in there. Some of them rely on networking tools to monitor the traffic going around. And many organizations have uh, capable SIMs out there to collect logs from everything else and feed them into your SIM to detect what's going on. So when a person wants to get access to one of these corporate applications, uh, the person does not go directly like that. Instead, what they do is that they are sent to a, a corporate portal in which when they select going into any one of those apps, they are bounced into, for example, Active Directory for uh, providing that uh, user ID and password. And then they don't get to that application yet. They are sent into any one of these extra security components that we have and finally once those are satisfied you get into those applications. What's the problem that many people are seeing here from the Colonial Pipeline, Solar Winds and many other attacks is that they manage to bypass or go around multi-factor authentication, privilege access management or CTNA. How is that happen? Well, how is well i'm not going to go into the details of what is it happening other than there might be some bad configuration somebody forgot to do some stuff or somebody made a change on the configuration and they didn't realize that there was this blind spot where people could go this is particularly true after you go through mergers or acquisition in which the network complexity goes beyond anybody's heads uh, to keep to keep around what what's going on here and there and people are not willing to put very strict restrictions on access because you don't want to block legitimate traffic that will put you in in hot water very quickly so how is it that we can detect that this extra step is not going through well you may say my sim gets to know all those well, it seems it's actually very good at knowing what happened on an environment. But what it seems is not good to know is for detecting what did not happen. So think of for a moment of any SIEM performing your queries or doing real-time collection, even getting some uh, flows in it. Imagine you creating rules or searches that detect, well, I want to see for every, for example, this individual in here, I want to see that any time that he goes into this path, all these steps are actually taken care of. Well, the problem is that the SIM is not a stateful machine. So it's, it's very kludgy. And even if you are able to implement some searches and queries to find those out, uh, you are going to be getting a tremendous amount of false positive if you try to force it into being a stateful machine. More on that later. So the SIMs are not going to help you there. Now, what about your EDR? I have a very capable EDR, a la CrowdStrike, Carbon Black, Sentinel-1, whatever it is that you have. Well, the SIM is very good at knowing what happened inside the machine of the guy that was using this and inside the machine if you install it on the server here and inside of every one of those components but that visibility is kept under every instance of the EDR the EDR is not capable of stitching together and 
really connecting the dots, figure out what is it that happened and what is it that did not happen. Well, how is it that we can detect that? Well, this is how the VIP technology, this is a verified identity protection, is capable of detecting that. What it does, it, it collects the logs either directly from your IDP and your Active Directory or both. Most importantly, it gets the network flows from a Cscaler uh, uh, technology or your firewall or your VIP, uh, uh, VPN networks or whatever is the networking devices. And, and on the second part of, of, of this video series, I'm going to show you the actual uh, technologies that this thing can collect uh, flows and other telemetry from, or it can get most of that data directly from your SIEM. And the, the net flows are precisely what is the nomenclature that allows it to connect the dots and see what is it that everybody there and whether there is a line missing in that uh, connected uh, dot in there. So the technology basically works if we say that this is IP0 in which the guy initiate and let's say that this is IP1, Internet Address 1, uh, the, your Active Directory is IP2, uh, your extra security implementation is IP3 and your final application is IP4, well, it is very capable of detecting in the last 15 minutes we saw this individual go from IP0, 1, 2, but not 3, and then went to 4, right? So that's how you can detect the, the overcoming or the bypassing of these uh, type of technologies. And the way it achieves that is they have a patented technology that builds every 15 minutes what is called an identity access graph. And what that graph allows you to do, this is what gives state to all these things. So you have in here, for example, uh, IP, IP0, and it's going into IP1, IP2, IP3, and finally to the corporate app IP4. So it is designed to detect many things, and I'm gonna go in again in the demo, to show you how it detects shadow access and many other mischiefs in there, but the things that does very uniquely is be because of this identity graph has the stateful machine to allow you to detect when some of these steps are actually bypassed. I will go into more details on, on a subsequent video, but here we can see in the main dashboard that you, you can detect on the ID and infrastructure bucket, you can see lack of MFA, you can see uh, shadow access in here, you can see bypassing of, in this particular case, PAM. And when you go into any one of those uh, incidents, you, you see the IDs, all the details, and this thing has been stitched together. Again, this is not the vision that an EDR has. Uh, this is, we stitched together all the technologies from the Active Directory, we know all the user IDs, and we, from the flows, we know from everybody when, from the logs, we, we, we know the entities that they went into. We stitch all this together, and you can get kind of a picture of a sneak view into that identity graph in this JSON structure that has put together all those places that the person went and all the applications that they access. In fact, this is something that it will be lovely for your uh, SOC people to process these, to parse these in order to, you know, understand the, the full uh, spectrum of the, of the actual attack. While in here, let me quickly show you some of the SIMs uh, that, that the technology support. Again, if you don't have, if your SIM is not listed in here, the technology can collect that data from the endpoints directly, but it's easier sometimes to do it from the um, SIM. All the directories and IDPs that it supports, you see all the names are there. All the, these are all the places where it can collect the logs, the, the flows actually, uh, you know, very importantly. We, we can get telemetry from your EDR as well. So, again, uh, 
great technology it doesn't have to displace any of the uh, stuff that you have in there but if you are concerned with bad guys out there bypassing any one of these technologies you may want to take a look at this uh, VIP component